Hello, everybody. Um, Heather has posted an interesting question about can we use a mouse instead of a uh, stylus in Wacom tablet? And the answer is yes, of course we can, but it's a lot more difficult, um, at least in the beginning. And it would be very difficult for those of us who have um, gotten used to a stylus. I have a Maggie problem right now. My cat is trying to cross, crawl across my tablet. Okay, let's see if we can get this back on track. Um, all righty. So the first thing that you would have to understand is that instead of using expressions like uh, pressure, we would have to use expressions like velocity and direction or source and random. But these other things would not work. Uh, no, none would work, of course. But the other things would not work with your um, mouse. Now, also, you're going to have to go to your preferences and to brush tracking and work on your setting for velocity. And I would say just make a bunch of really fast lines through your scratch pad, and that's going to give you something like that, which would probably work pretty well for, for well, it'll, you have to try it and see. And then you may have to adjust these up or down to get your velocity working the best for you. Okay, so let's see if we can explain this a little more in real terms. If we go to the real 2B pencil and we set its size up to velocity, and then we click on this invert size expression, and we have the min size low. Your side step, size step is going to have to stay up high with, uh, the, this is a, a hard media brush, so it has to stay up high, but that's okay. What this means is that the slower the velocity, the smaller the, the stroke, the, the thinner the stroke. The faster the velocity, the thicker the stroke. So if I took this real 2B pencil, and let's get kind of a dark color there, and I go slowly, I'm going to get a fairly nice thin line. Faster I go, the thicker the line becomes. But it's really fast, and it's kind of jumpy. But even, even so, I mean, I could probably get used to making some interesting marks with uh, this. And, and again, you've got to understand it's going to be so dependent upon your uh, settings. As a matter of fact, let's grab the... Um, if I can find it brush calibration and we'll bring this out and we'll enable brush calibration. Okay. So at this setting, notice what the brush does slow, fast, and it gets kind of bumpy like that. Right? So we bring this up to get it closer and now we go slow, fast, and see the difference that made? Okay, so let's bring that back down. Slow. Ah, sometimes it doesn't want to move. Slow and fast. And it's getting to be a little bit different. Let's string, bring this one down a bit. And see what... Whoa. Now, look at that. That really made a difference. All right, so this is a big group here. Let's see if this comes up with it. Anyway, I don't want to take too much time playing with this, but basically that's what you want to do is you want to work on your velocity and power scale on your brush calibration. All right, so we'll move it, move, move it out on the side, and I will delete what's there. The cat just went across again. Okay, so now... Another thing that you want to think about would be brushes that um, will do part of the work for you. And those kind of brushes would be something like this uh, sergeant brush. So if we pick up a color with the sergeant brush, and let's look how I have it set up. I honestly don't remember. Um, okay, so I have the size. 
I have no difference in the way the size is set up. So right now, it's just going to give you the same thing regardless of which direction you, you go. Now, if we go to general, my opacity is set up to pressure. So let's do something different with this one. Let's change it. Let's change the opacity to, um, wait a minute, get rid of this. Let's change the opacity to direction. Okay, now if I change the opacity to direction, and this is at zero, then that means up and down, I'm going to get hardly any opacity. Right to left is when I'll get the opacity. At an angle, I get somewhere in between, okay? So when it goes over itself, we're going to be bringing the white in, and back and forth, we've got the blue. Now, of course, if we have red down here, and we go back to the blue, we're going to be bringing that red and blue together and kind of mixing it. Okay, now if we go to size and I change that to velocity, and again, I'm going to uh, invert the expression. I have the min size real low. I don't remember what the original setting was. But again, here, slow gives me nice little lines, and faster would give me uh, heavier lines. Now, I, I'm not all that fond of the sergeant brush. But you could, uh, Heather, I imagine your sergeant brushes would work very well. It's kind of like buttery oils. My buttery oils are all based on the same technology that's in the uh, sergeant brush, but I've taken it to a different kind of place. So this type of brush is one that will work in your favor. For instance, if you start with, um, let's look at how I've got it set up first. Size, I don't have anything done to that. Uh, opacity, nothing done to that. Okay, so the brush is still as it was originally. Now, if I grab this blue color and I begin to paint with it, if I pick it, if I pick up the mouse and just make little short strokes, it's going to apply a fair amount of color. And it's not going to change in size, but it has a nice sort of painterly look. Now, if I hold the mouse button down uh, so that it's, uh, it's as if the stylus is never being picked up off the canvas, then this paint uh, blends and bleeds into itself. It's like it dries out, and then if it goes over some wet paint, it'll pick that paint up and begin to... Uh, blend. It's like it blends because of the amount of time that it is left on the uh, surface um, of the canvas. So I can put in some nice reds and then hold down and begin to blend those reds into a nice purple. Okay. And again, all I would have to do to make this more interesting would be to change the opacity to something like direction and change the size to something like velocity. But in this case, I'm going to need to bring the min size down some. All right, so slow would give, oops, I got to reverse it. Slow would give me a smaller brush stroke. And faster would give me a bigger brush stroke. But now look, I've got the opacity for um, direction. So when I go down, I'm, I'm using less of the paint and picking up more of what's already there. If I go side to side, you see I'm putting more of the paint down. So that's how your direction works. But if I change this direction uh, down here, right now it's on uh, zero. If I change that to 90, now the up and down is going to give me more opacity. Side to side, less. 
and in between is a little more. And I could change that to 45. And now I'm going to get most of my opacity in that direction less opacity in that direction because it's it's now the it's always a perpendicular setup this to that it's just that now we've turned that perpendicular setup to this way and that way see so you can you can change your expression or change the way your opacity works based on uh, the direction okay so can we do something with this sure we can uh, not very well. You, you really would have to pa practice with this. But I could take this um, brush and come in here and begin to draw something with the mouse. I guess I should talk, but, you know, it's a lot more fun to just paint without having to say something all the time. <laughs> Let's see, this would have been, that would have needed to come down something like this. And I probably, this should probably come down a bit, this would have been over some. That's all right, we're going to paint over the top of it anyway. And then we would have another uh, thing over the side. Y'all don't laugh at this. <laughs> All right, so I'll take a nice red here and begin, or it's actually an alizarin kind of color. And I'm going to drop it in just little tip, tip, tips so that it's darker. And then I'm going to hold my brush down and begin to fan it out a little bit like you see. Then I'm going to make my brush real tiny, not that, about, about like that. And I'll begin to put in some of that same color up here and we'll let that be a little darker. But we do want to make it have a little bit of a highlight. but have some darkness in the bottom of it. And let's see, we can uh, switch to my dropper tool, pick that color again, go back up here, and I want to bring that over some. Okay, now I could I could sit here and paint for a long, long time and try to actually make this come out looking like something. But, you know, there's no sense in us spending that much time on this because I, I think I've shown you that you can work this way once you make a few changes with your preferences, your brush tracking, make a few changes in the brush, and uh, then a lot, a lot of practice to get this to work. Okay, hope that helps. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.